Hi, this is RJ. Today I'm going to talk about a new invention of mine called my voiceover controller. And I'll also be speaking of several other associated items, including two switch interfaces made by competing companies, if you will, that tout global access of the iPad through switch technology. They're new switch interfaces. That's true to some extent, and I wanted to show you how it's true and how it affects my voiceover controller also. So we've got my voiceover controller with its six buttons, select, type, slash, move. We'll talk about that some more. The on-off button and popping up the on-screen keyboard. The home button, next, and back. Notice there's no up and down. I'm also using a Bluetooth speaker of mine, very thin and lightweight, that will amplify the output of the iPad. Normally I'd have it super Velcroed to the back of my iPad or maybe to my stand. And then I'm using a new stand here of mine that gets my iPad up nice and high and pretty firmly in place. High enough to be above the voiceover controller. So here we go. First thing I want to show you is something called assistive touch. See that button right there? That allows me to be inside of anywhere. I'll just go into Skype here and it doesn't matter where. I have a bub cap covering my home button so that people, mostly with autism, that fall on the spectrum, they can't be pressing the home button. The only way that you can do it as a supervisor is with a pen or pencil point. Good, good. So we're in Skype and if I press my assistive touch button, it brings a menu up and I can get home that way without having to mess with my home button or I could take out a pen or a pencil and poke it through there, but I'd rather do it this way. The reason I bring up assistive touch is because that must be turned off for the method that I'm using for my voiceover controller and also for the switch access methods that the other companies are using. So I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go into general and then I'm going to go all the way back to general so you can see here. And I'm going to go to accessibility and there's assistive touch and I'm going to turn it off. And I'll go back to accessibility and now I'm going to turn on a feature called voiceover. Voiceover on. Home button to the left. Settings. Voice over on. Voice over is a technology that Apple built into their iOS, iPhone operating system, which is their iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad that does this. Voice over on. Voice over practice button. Brightness and wallpaper selected. Airplane mode. Up, general, button. And when we're on what we want, we tap twice on the screen anywhere. Selected, about, button. And that actually acts as sort of the enter key for a blind person. So this device and the other devices by other companies that tap switch access to the total iPad are all coming in through voiceover because that's the only technology that Apple gave us to work with. So I've enabled voiceover and I'm going to now be able to use it through my voiceover controller. And watch. Software update. Button. I'm pressing my right and left arrows. About. Software up usage. Button. And now what I'll do from now on is I'm going to narrate which of these buttons I'll press, but I'm going to zoom in on the screen. VPN. And it's going to be easier to see back at our home screen. So I'm going to press the home button on my voiceover controller. Alexa come AAC. Digit. Double tap dictation. Predictable. Proliquo to go. Now you can Double see that I'm moving through the icons on my home screen, but yet this is not switch enabled as far as an app. My other Bluetooth switch interface as of this point, August 2012, can only work with apps that are switch enabled, such as predictable. That's switch enabled. Double dictation. Digit. Digit is not. Double that's a remote controller for the home. 
Alexicum AAC. And that is, that means that Double I've contacted the developer and they agreed and implemented switch friendliness scanning in their app. But Digit. through Double this method, the voiceover controller and the switch action of the other company's switch interfaces, we can access many of these apps that are not switch friendly by these alternative input devices. So I'm pressing next, Dictation. next, Dictable. next. Call to go. There is no up and Double down. To I've got to go left to right, top to bottom in order to get anywhere. So if I want to get all the way down to the app store, which is in my bottom right here, Stories. You guessed it. My top people and crowd on and go right side point to get slide spot talking the page to the mail app store 22 new items. And I'm finally there and I can press Double select. To open. App store. Selected. All categories. Button. One of five. And I can move through this with my next and back keys. I'm up here right now. Book, is catalog, more, voice, clear tech, newsstand, extinct, dinosaur, cooks, illustrate, holophic, turn date, see all. Once again, this is a non-switch friendly app and I'm operating it through an alternative method. I'm using my next and back button. We can't go up and down. We have to go left to right, top to bottom. I'm using my select button. I can use my home button to get back here. Alexa, now here's AAC. something very important to notice Double and that is I'm in my upper left. Normally we would wrap around to the lower right but when I press my back button nothing happens. I just get a little bunk. And if I was on my bottom right the same thing would happen. It would not wrap all the way around to the upper left. That's a glitch from Apple and I have several incident reports into Apple to try to fix that before they release iOS 6 in October or so. I hope they fix that because it would save you guys plenty of time out there. That is the voiceover controller basically. We can do many things with it in many apps that are not switch enabled but be aware it only works with voiceover compatible apps. There are some apps that are not really voiceover compatible. Let me show you one. I'm going to move with my next button down to the page turner here. You might not have even known you have that. While I'm doing this, I do have to mention one limitation of my current voiceover controller, August 2012, and that is we can't just hold the button down. Stories. I'm holding it down right now. Doesn't do anything. I have to repeatedly press. And if it's a long list, especially if it's a multi-column list, then it might take a while to get somewhere. That is a very important fact that you need to know for the switch options because if you're doing it by single switch, whether you're step scanning, which some of them don't even have a regular step scan with two switches, or you're auto scanning where things move by itself sort of every three seconds. Scan to one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. That's how the auto scanning Double would work within open. the other switch capable interfaces that have just come out this August of 2012. But I'm going to um, come down to the page turner. Page two of five. I'm not sure if you knew that that existed right there, but we can press our enter key right here. Page three of five. Adjustable. Page four of five. Cool. Adjustable. Eh? Home. So, choosing my page turner each time, move to the right one screen, and pressing my home button, move to the left. Watch again. I'm pressing my select. Page two of five. Adjustable. And I'll press home button. Home. And that's my home screen, page one of five. So that's how we can move around within screens. And if we were in categories, we could do the same thing. So once again, yes, I'm sir. using an alternate input device. No to operate the iPad. Now how does voiceover fit in here? Remember before I told you that voiceover is for the blind to do this. FaceTime. New stand folder. Photos. Right? Double tap. But Apple found out that most blind people operate a keyboard in order to access the screen using screen reading technology. The most famous program for Windows is called JAWS. So Apple built in keyboard shortcuts to all the voiceover features. Most notably, 
moving forward, an object. An object is a screen object, such as a paragraph, a button, um, a slider. Those are all objects to the iOS. Or we can go back with the left arrow key. We can select Apple chose up, down, simultaneously to be the enter key or the select. They gave us access to the home button through control alt H. I can access my on-screen keyboard using the interface built into the voiceover box here. And then this type move is for quick now. This is a very important one. That's what I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to go to notes. ITunes, YouTube, video, notes. Press select. Notes. Three notes. And I'm going to go to my text area. Search. Notes list. Notice if I have yes. multi-columns, yes, I've got to go all through the left one before I get to the right one. That's just how voiceover works. Hi, what's up? Rudy was he? Yes. Add. Yesterday. Note. Yes. Text. So now I'm in the text field. Double tap to edit. The switch interfaces will also allow you to have this option. But remember, if you're working with one or two switches, which is the most that I ever work with, then you're limited insofar as what you can do because you have to hold down switches in order to get to other functions. And for the people I work with, holding down things and keeping a, a good, strong, tight hold down is an issue. So I'm going to press my select button to edit this area. Top of document. And I'm now in my editing mode. Capital Y. E. Echo. S. Now I will press my on-screen keyboard button. Bottom of keyboard visible. But remember that my arrow keys are moving around within the text of my text field. I want to be moving around screen objects. So I have to press my type slash move button to toggle between typing and moving. And I need to move now down to the on-screen keyboard area. Quick nav on. And that turns on quick nav, a feature of voiceover that allows us to choose between using our arrow keys to move around screen objects or to move around within a text field. Q W B R T Y U. And you can see that I'm moving I O around my screen objects now. Each letter on the keyboard is a screen object to the iOS. Yes, it's a long ways, but there is no up and down. Remember, Apple made this for blind people, and if they're using a keyboard, they would not be doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to type a space. Next keyboard. Space. Press select. Space. And it yes. pressed the space up there for me. I'm still around the space bar. Yep, I've got to work my way all the way through. They don't tell you this when you're getting one of their switch options, the switch interfaces that use voiceover in the same way. And this is how they would do it. So my advice is if you have a text oriented person, you might want to do this part of your editing within a real word prediction program that's optimized for moving around and choosing things versus the iOS version, which is not really that optimized. Just to show you one of the more important apps that VoiceOver Controller will allow you to do, along with those switch interfaces that I've been mentioning, music and camera are two of the biggies. I'll just do music here. Remember, music has not been modified by Apple in any way to be switch friendly. So we're going to operate it through this VoiceOver technology using my voiceover controller. I have arrowed my way through the different home screens to music. I'll press select with my green button here. Music, previous track, button. And I have made a playlist with just all of my rewind. songs. Play. Next you could all just use Come songs or library. Button. You can arrow your way through anything that is voiceover compatible, which this app is. The music is just another app on the iOS. Gloria Est, repeat all, track was shop, genius, but volume, error play, playlists, RJ, edit, six song, one, conga, Gloria Est, Tafon, greatest hit, two, don't let the sun go down, three, 
Free. Uh, four. Four. Five. Th six. Turn. 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 To everything there is a season. Birds. The birds' greatest hits. Three. Fifty-eight. Downloading. I'll press select. And you can see that I have quick access to music libraries and all the functions of playing music. I can even choose where the music is coming from, an external set of speakers or my little external speaker. I'll go home. This time I'm going to show you an example of an app that should be voiceover friendly, but it's not. Netflix is a very popular way of using your iPad to watch TV and movies on your iPad. Netflix. Browse. In progress. Browse. Now, these work on rows, and there's lots more off to the right of these rows, which we can't see. Watch. I'm going to press next repeatedly. MDF search. Continue. Soldier Blue. Crusade of Vengeance. The Pagan Queen. So we're right here. We would think that we'd go here next. Separate ways. But we don't. We're off screen. The Norseman. And we're off screen again. Season of the Witch. So this should have scrolled as we're moving to the right over here, but this app is not completely voiceover compatible. Fortunately, we can hear things at least. Let's see how far we have to go to the right before it comes to the second row. Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Lot, The Secret, Final Loop, Top 10 for RJ. And now we're Pretty there. So we were about five off screen here. So it's not fully voiceover compatible in that it didn't move things on the screen. I'll press my home button. Netflix. I'm going to try to navigate to my... Double. I'm going to go get my camera app. Home. I'm back to my home screen here. There's my camera app. Dog. Right Bounce. there. Page. Game set. Going Photo. back New with set. my back Reset. arrow. Remind. Camera. camera. Select Double with my big open. green button. Camera. Photo and video viewer button. And this is just the big white area behind my iPad, but just to show you that we can take pictures here. Options button. Camera chooser. Back facing mode. Viewfinder. Take picture button. There it is, the take picture button. And we've taken a picture. I've gone back to my home screen after I've taken pictures. And I'm going to choose my photos app. Press the enter, my Double select button. Photos. Now using my arrow key, my right arrow. Album, places, slideshow, edit, but photo, 6.04 p.m., June 26th, photo, 3.40 p.m., August 20th, 2010. Now, Portrait. Apple's Portrait. own photo app is not fully voiceover compliant. The only way I can get to the different photos is through this screen right here and then pressing enter. In order to change photos, I've got to go back to photos and look at all of them and then choose a different one because, and I'll show you a voiceover non-compliance right here, right within Apple. Photo I'm in the photo chooser. Photo, three, photo chooser. Photo, photo chooser. There's no way using the photo chooser or down with one to change to the picture value. like we did with our page chooser. Photo chooser. Photo two of pen. Adjustable. Photo chooser, photo two of pen, adjustable. You can see that it never moves. Even my right or left arrow will now move the object that I'm on in voiceover. Photo, 3.40 p.m., August 20th. Now we're on the photo because that's a screen object. I can press enter. Photo, 3.40 p.m., Nothing happens. August 20th, 2010. So the only way is to go back to photos in the upper left. I'm back here now, I press enter. And Select now, albums, but place, slide show, edit, but photo, and now I'm moving through my photos PM. again. Fo photo. That's the only photo. way. Nine. So Apple's own app, Photos, is not fully voiceover compliant, but enough workarounds to get through.